guys, welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, my name is Martin, and today I've got Emil with me. How are you, Emil? Well, thanks, Martin. How are you? Good, good. Um, today we're actually starting a four-part series on devotion. And the first part is the Word of God. But before we get to the Word of God, why is devotion so important for a Christian? Well, I think devotion is important for a Christian because it's, um, it's what pretty much defines our relationship with God. It's about how, um, how much we are putting in, with the time we're putting in with God. And uh, the more we put in, the more it reflects in our day, day-to-day life as a Amen. Christian. Yeah. Oh, that's great, man. I think it's something that's very ignored in today's life, Absolutely. like really ignored, especially when you have a busy time. And often yeah. we, we do make, you know, um, we do make excuses on it. Right. Yeah. I've, I've got a family. I'm working. Um, you know, I've got my own duties and so yeah. on. But we don't realize how impactful it can be, yeah. whether you have it in your life or whether you, you don't. don't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe that's something important. So devotion is basically where you put time in your daily life, and and I believe it actually should be part of your every moment. Yes, with absolutely. God, you know, yeah. like one of the areas we're going to be talking about, which is prayer, right? Yes. And we're going to be touching on that in the next <coughs> video where you pray without ceasing. So this type of devotion, man, it just needs to be in your every moment. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I believe that's important. Absolutely. And I think it's the same way, whether it's um, anything else in your life, if you're not devoted to it, um, you won't get the results that you want. Oh, of course. It's, it's impossible. I mean, for example, if you're at work and you're not devoted to your job, I don't think it will be likely that you're going to get a promotion or any, any success in it. And it's the same thing with our Christian life. If we're not devoted to God, if we're not devoted to um, what it means to be a Christian, then I don't see how we can see results as oh, a Christian. Of it, well, that's what I do with the gym, you know. <laughs> I try and be devoted, but it uh, doesn't get me anywhere. <laughs> it, it's, it's that kind of thing where you start on Mondays, you know, like I'm going to start my diet on Monday. And you it end just, on Tuesday? Yeah, <laughs> and it never, it never continues. In there. Yeah. Um, well, why do we have the Word of God? I think that's an important question to ask. Um, it is. Um, yeah. I think um, one really good answer is to show us what it means to be a son of, like a child of God, uh, what it means to be a Christian, and uh, the steps that we need to take in our day-to-day life um, to be a Christian. And also, it's, it reveals to us the need, that th- why we need Jesus in the first place. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't really know, would we? It's, it's, it's kind of like a guidebook to life. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's similar to a compass. It, it is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You're, you're like, you have this map, which is your life, mm-hmm. and you're like, man, how, how can I make sense of this? Yeah. And you have the Word of God where it kind of deals with all these areas in your life that are so important, you mm-hmm. know, when it comes to morality, when it comes to marriage and how yeah. God designed it to be. Or even, you know, the, the simple things sometimes, you know, the li- little simple things mm-hmm. that you'll be like, oh, I never thought yeah. of that. Yeah. You know, that's I think that's something where, to me, it feels like God's yeah. like, I want to speak into every area of your life. Absolutely. You know, and, and he has the right to. Right? Uh, absolutely. He yeah. has the right to, so I think that's very important for us, man. Yeah. I, I mean, another example, because we were talking about work and devotion to work, for example. Um, mm. I think, imagine doing a job and you don't know what your job is, what you have to do. How can you be devoted to it? <laughs> True. It's impossible. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's what the Bible is. It shows us how we can be devoted mm. and what devotion even looks like. And we have many great examples of what devotion looks like. For example, like Paul. Um, mm. I think that's an amazing example of what a devoted Christian looks like. Yeah. So it's, it's not like we're <coughs> making that mistake where you see the people in Athens did like, you mm. know, they had this one of those idols, which was, you know, the unknown God. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> well, we worship you, but we don't know who you yeah. are. Yeah. Um, but in Christianity is obviously different. In Christianity, God is making very clearly in the Bible who He is. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And w- clearly, what He isn't. Yeah, and oh, that's, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think. Well, that's actually very important absolutely. in today's age. 
right? Yeah. Because you're having a lot of these <coughs> different ideas of Christianity coming out, yeah. right? And one of them is like progressive Christianity. Yeah. You know, it's just molding God into who you want him to be. Mm. But for a Christian, a Bible-believing Christian, it's God, you tell me who you are, and I will believe in that. I will yeah. follow that. And that's what we get from the Bible. Yeah, I think many humans uh, make that mistake where they create a self-serving like God. Like it's like God is serving mm. us and he's the one that's being devoted to us and what we want and he's molded to our image. Yeah. And I think a lot of um, a lot of people, humans, make that mistake with their gods. They make it according to what they want. <laughs> yeah. And they unfortunately, they're bringing that into Christianity and... Um, Thankfully, we have the Bible to teach us what false doctrine is, uh, how to spot false teachers and um, false prophets, and how to combat them in the in a biblical and correct manner um, that's um, moral in the eyes of God. And I think it's it's important that we are not compromising our morals and compromising the word of God ever. And because um, you see that a lot in Christianity nowadays, with like the prosperity gospel being preached, for example, it's all it's all about us. It's yeah. all about you. <laughs> it's how do you win? How do you do this? And I think that's detestable in the eyes of God. This proud sense of like self, and it's not that we shouldn't be proud of who we are as Christians, as sons of God, but it's not on what we did, but what Jesus did um, for us. And I think uh, I think I, the only thing I take pride in is is in my weaknesses and and mm. how God shines through those. That's the only thing I'm proud of and how much how much pride I have in Jesus Christ for what he did for me. And, and I'm proud to be a Christian and I don't just show that by wearing a cross, not that I'm wearing one now, but mm. I show that by, I, we show that yeah. by how we live our life and how devoted we are to Jesus Christ. And if we don't have that devotion in our life and we, it's not evident to a non-believer, then what do we really have? Uh, that's how I see it. Yeah. I think, well, it's a big red flag when, when um, your idea of God mm -hmm. always agrees with you. You know that you've made it up, yeah. um, which is why, like, one of the things that we see in the Word of God, as, as in our devotion especially, is that when we are reading the Word of God, it often conflicts with our lifestyle, yeah. with our ideas, with our goals. And this is the moment where you're like, I need this conviction in my life yeah. to reshape myself yeah. by the by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. to reshape my life into who God wants me to be. Yeah. And and this whole idea is that you come to God and he'll be like, This is what I don't want in your life. Yeah. This is what I want to place in your life. Yeah. And often that voice is the word itself. Yes. Right? Um, you were sharing earlier, you're like, you know, uh, and that was before the video, we were talking about this. Um, he said, he said, the way we speak to God is we pray, right? Yes. It's a form of communication. We pray. And the way God speak to us mainly is the Bible, the Bible, right? So God speak to us all the time. Now, what happens if the Bible is closed? God is silent, right? Yeah. What happened if the Bible is open? God has speaking. an opportunity to speak to us. So imagine every single day opening the Bible. That means every single day we have an opportunity to hear for, from what God has prepared for us. The Word of God. Oh, amen. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. And um, one of the points it really touches me as a Christian yeah. is that verse in first Peter chapter 2 verse 2 mm -hmm. and he Peter saying he's saying like newborns babes crave pure spiritual milk so that uh, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation mm -hmm. and when you approach the word of God as this spiritual food mm -hmm. that God has prepared for you then I believe that gives you the strength to battle your problems, yes. to battle the sin that is in your life, yeah. to battle these bad ideas yes. that you've brought from the world yes. into your Christian life. Yeah. And it gives strength to your spirit to battle the flesh. Yeah. You know? and, and the problem, 
I get with a lot of people that when we talk about, oh, I have this personal sin, I have this personal struggle, yeah. often I say, how's your devotion in the word? Yeah. And often lacking. Oh, yeah. yeah. You get those faces that are like, oh, you know, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So Christianity is not about a book club. No. Where you're going to come, oh, God wants me to read a book. No, it's not about that. This is your spiritual food. And if you feed yourself, for example, once a week, you're a dying and starving person, right? Yes. And yes. if you're a dying, starving person, and you're going at and battling your sin, battling the devil, battling your everyday life, and being defeated, that shouldn't come as a shock. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, speaking on the Bible and how important it is, um, why it's important for us, and how we can use it to um, defend ourselves, like, but it's more of an offensive defense. It's not like a shield. It's more of a sword, sword that we can parry. Oh, yeah? Yeah, um, well, actually, an attack. I'll, I'll read a verse on that. Sure. Um, you, you can continue your points there. Um, and that's in Ephesians 6. I think you, you're trying yes. to get there. He's saying... Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, yes. which is the word of God. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, and that's exactly um, what I want to share about, really. It's, it's, it's said in that verse, which is because that, that whole part, it talks about the armor of God. And the only offensive thing that's mentioned there is the word of God. Yeah. And that's, it's a sword. It's double-edged sword. And it's important for us to use that, to utilize that against um, people that bring up false doctrines or um, people that have compromised the Bible and they nitpick things to suit their agenda. And we, if we do not know the Bible, if we have not honed and sharpened our sword, how can we defend against that? Mm. If, you, if you come across a, a false doctrine, someone comes and says to you, oh, this verse says that, and you don't know otherwise, yeah. okay, I'll take your word for it. True. But that's dangerous for us. And I think it's very important that we sharpen our sword so that it's always ready to attack the people that are bringing false doctrine. We don't attack people. We attack false doctrine and we attack the demons. We don't attack humans with it. We, we try to always um, help our brothers and sisters that are, um, you know, in the wrong, on the wrong path. Uh, we try to help them and we attack their false doctrine. And I think it's very important that we do that, just like how Jesus, uh, when he was tempted by the devil, when the devil tried to tempt, it, to tempt him, uh, Jesus' defense and Jesus' attack was, it is written. Mm. He didn't say, I'm saying to you, or I say, it is written. It is written. And yeah. that's very important. That was his, that was his kind of counterattack. So the devil's bringing up verses from the Bible. He's bringing up things that are written. Yeah, he's, he's abusing the word. He's abusing the word. He's bringing his self-serving things. And Jesus says, yeah, but it is written. Right? He, he counterattacks. Mm. And that's important for us in our day-to-day -day life. And yeah. that's why Jesus is the perfect example of who we should live like. And Paul says that many times. Be like me, for I am like Christ. Christ. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we should live. Yeah. Just, just to mm. obviously add to, <coughs> to that point, which is the verse, right? We spoke about Ephesians 6. Yes. Before he mentions the armor of God, which is one of them is, is the word, the sword, yes. he says in verse 12, he's saying, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against the world, uh, world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in, in the heavens. Yes. And, and obviously he continues this chat. Yeah. So sometimes we come to the word, and we're dealing with, with even sometimes an internal bat battle, yeah. right? You, you were talking about if someone comes and, you know, deceives you through the word. Yes. Or if the devil does it, which he did with Jesus. Yes. Sometimes you don't need an ex external, um, you know, source. Sometimes it's your own ideas, your own thoughts. Yeah. You might be thinking, maybe I should do this because it's going to benefit me. Yes. It, it'd be better for my life. Yep. It's a sm small little lie, but it could get me out of trouble, you know? Yeah. And these ideas, that's when you'd be like, well, the word is not only outside. <coughs> because I've been studying the word, now the word is in me. Because I am 
feeding myself with the word. You know, I, I think that's something very important. Absolutely. And and I th- and I think it's it's never like people don't become false teachers well, for the most part. Like straight away, like straight away diving into false teachings and usually it's a step by step. Mm. Slowly you gotta convince yourself. Yes, yes, you know, yes. Sometimes. S- it's a slow and eventual progression into um being uh, what i see is no longer christian oh. um so it's it starts off you're a christian but you're just misinformed you're mm-hmm. a christian and now you're kind of being led astray by your pride by your lust by your greed whatever it may be um and then eventually you're no longer a christian you're just a self-serving ex-christian um and that's it's dangerous it's it compromise is. is incredibly dangerous and oh, yeah. We do not know. Sometimes we don't even realize it because we are not well versed in the Bible. But unfortunately, sometimes I think some people that read the Bible a lot, they know the Bible a lot more than you or I. Um, they're sometimes immature, and I think you were speaking to me about that before. If you'd like to touch on that, how they're kind of an immature person, but they know so much about the Bible. Like, yeah, uh, to me, because I've been in, in ministry for fifteen years, man. Yeah. Um, and I understand why people fall for it because we live in the age of technology and information. Yeah. So when we come to the word of God, we approach it the same way. Okay. Yeah. How much information I can obtain, but they don't realize that it's not only about learning. Yeah. It's also about feeding yourself and growing in your Christian character. So what happens is you have christian babies who are not growing in their faith yes learning a lot of the word you know and you, you're starting to get that imbalance so what happens is they start to use this very sharp sword which yeah. is the word of god and start swinging it around and what you'll notice is not only are they going to hurt themselves they're also going to hurt the people around them yeah. So instead of using the word of God to benefit themselves and benefit others, <laughs> they're using it in a very immature way where they start to hurt others, yes. including themselves as well. Yeah. So I think that's something very important. When you come and read the word, you need to apply that into your life. If it's not being applied into your life, and if, you, if your concern is... Okay, I, I need to learn John three sixteen. I need to memorize the verse. I need to know where it is yeah. because that's going to make me sound smart in Bible studies or if I'm talking to someone on the street. Yeah. If that's your approach to the Word of God, that's a very unhealthy way of approaching it. But if you come to the Word of God and say, God, you are speaking to me, but also show me what I lack in my life. And how the word of God can change me. Yeah. And I believe that as you grow in your faith, in your character with God, and you grow in your knowledge and wisdom of the word of God, mm-hmm. then you, you find yourself to be a, a more of a complete person in the sense of I'm able to use the word of God the way God intended me to use it. I believe that's Absolutely. important. Absolutely. And um that's, you're absolutely right. It is very important uh, for us to be mature in our faith and also to have a sharp sword. Because if we're not mature, it's like sending a child to a battlefield, he's not going to be very useful <laughs> with, a, with a sword. He's, if anything, he's going to attack his allies and he's going to be a liability. Um, and look, sometimes they mean well. People mm. like that, they, they mean well. It's just they're not mature enough to realize that they're doing damage. Yeah. Um, it's th- All they can think of is them themselves because they haven't matured to the point where they have uh, the thought outside of themselves and um and i see a lot of christians making that mistake i know some christians have made mm-hmm. that mistake um where they oh, including me yeah we've all been a- there. as i was growing in my faith i yeah. thought um i was doing the right thing but sometimes you were maybe serving your pride or s- serving your own um you know um selfish Motives, you know, and, and sometimes people think that that's the right path to be on as a Christian. Oh, I have to know my Bible. Uh, oh, what a what a wonderful thing it would be if I could memorize the entire Bible <laughs> word for word. Oh, you told That'd me a, nice. you told me a, like a verse. Uh, you know, oh, Ephesians five twenty five. Oh, I know it. 
from her. Oh, I know what that is. That would be amazing, yes. But uh, unfortunately, that just puffs up. If you don't have the wisdom to use it, what point is it? Yeah, yeah. What knowledge what is it? do puff up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it's very, very important to have um, wisdom um, along with knowledge because knowledge without wisdom is useless, useless. And wisdom without any knowledge is also unfortunately not going to be as useful as if you had some knowledge you, um, you can't really even call it wisdom if no, there's no knowledge no. backing it up yes yeah. so um even even people that were following jesus that were fishermen they still knew most of the word they still knew the old testament they, yeah. they would have known a lot about it like a lot of about what, what traditions that the Jewish people had and the prayers that they used to have and, and the history. They, they knew all of that, even when they were fishermen. So when Jesus came, they understood who he was by his actions, by who he was. And through the Holy Spirit, of course, they, they, they came to knew him, know him as the Messiah. And, and I think it's important for us to have that knowledge, but also the wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit. And yeah. it's something, if you're lacking that, I think it's very, very important to ask God, and you will receive it. Um, if you come with faith, if you come with a humble spirit, pray for wisdom, read your Bible, of course, it's very important, and come with a humble spirit and ask God for wisdom, and you will receive it. I assure you, you will receive it. I know I did the yeah. same thing. I'm sure you have too. Yeah, James 1 speaks about it. He's yeah. saying, ask for wisdom and God will give it. Yes. Yeah, God is God is so generous. Amen. And, and you know, this is actually one of the good points how how do we know if we ask for wisdom mm -hmm. god will give it well that's what the bible says absolutely so this is where you start to see the fruit of your devotion in your life and not only it's that we need to use the word of god in a biblical way in yeah. the way god intended it to be but also we need to use the word of god to live a holy and pure life right. yes i think that is so important because absolutely. If anything that got Jesus angry was a person that knew the word, but was a hypocrite, didn't live it out. Yeah. And we know that group, <clears throat> which was the Pharisees, Pharisees right? Yes. They were people who were very educated in yeah. the word, you know? And when Jesus was sharing Old Testament, you know, passages, they knew what he was talking about. Yes. But they also knew that they weren't living it out. Yeah. And they weren't doing what God's will was for them, right? Yes. Jesus rebukes them in John 6. He does. You know, he's saying you, you're not doing the will of God for yourselves. So I think that's so important for us. It's, it's not that we just come and I feel like I am growing in my devotion mm -hmm. in the word of God by knowing more. But I also need to look at my life. Absolutely. And I need to see, can I see fruits of what I'm learning that's been applied in my life. Yeah. And if I see that, to me, that's growth. Absolutely. You know? So to me, I, I even share that with some of my friends. I say, the way I know I'm growing in the word of God, it's not how much more I know, it's how much more I'm obeying. Mm. And I think the more you're obeying the word, the more you're growing spiritually. Absolutely, yeah. And, um, I think I think it's very important for us to not just know the word but also live it, um, and just because uh, it, it's a living it's a living word. It's oh, not amen. it's not a of of course it is a book. I have we have eyes we can see that it's just a book, but it's much more than that. It's the word of God, and the word of God is not something that's inanimate. It's living, and we have to show that by living that life by showing the word of God in our life by living according to it according yeah. to what god has given us um and by doing that i think having that fear of the lord i think that's where wisdom truly starts yeah right. that's what's that's what's in the bible it says that's what it says yeah. in the bible <laughs> uh, i just pulled up a verse here and and that's very actually pretty famous verse right if if anyone reads the bible they know it yep. second timothy three sixteen, right Every scripture is inspired by God, which is why we trust the Bible so much, yes. and that's why we devote ourselves to the word of, to the word of God. It's not someone's opinion; it's God's word. Yes. 
and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training of righteousness. Now, a lot of people read that to, in a way, defend the inspiration of the Word of God. Mm. But if you look at verse 17, which is right next to it, and I think that's so underrated because not many people pay attention to it. And this is what it says. This is the conclusion of verse 16. That the person dedicated to God may be capable and equipped for every good work. Yes. So if you're looking, or you might be asking yourself, I want to serve God whether it's with my family, whether it's in my local church, yeah. or whether it's on a mission field. I want to serve God somehow. If you're not equipped with the Word of God, then you're not really ready to serve no. God. No. That's why Paul, encouraging his spiritual son Timothy, is saying, the Word is inspired by God. Study it, yeah. educate yourself in it, and that way you're ready, you're equipped for every good word. Yeah. And that's a big statement, every good word. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think um I think it is very important for us to take um the Bible seriously. I know some Christians do not believe that it's uh important. Important. Yeah. Oh, it is important but it's not as important. Mm -hmm. It's more of a guidebook, like a something that it's optional to read. And our our lives as Christians are more important than it. Um, now, that's a very dangerous teaching when they put themselves and their own teachings above the Bible. Yeah, true. Um, it gets to the point because they can you can make your own statements that contradict the Bible. Yeah, the Bible is important, but we as Christians are more important. And if if, that, if that's their idea of of the Bible, then they can compromise and eventually um, it can lead them astray from what true Christianity is and what the true church is and eventually they become like Babylon. Mm. I'm trying to use the nicest words. <laughs> um, but you become like Babylon and uh, they're not a faithful wife uh, to, to Jesus. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just a harlot. That's just what a Babylon harlot. Is. Yeah. Yes. And um, I was trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, it's, it's in the Bible, guys. It's in the Bible. <laughs> yes, it's, it's not my words. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and you see that in uh, some churches, and then you see even even the people that are not Christians, people that are not Christians, they criticize those churches and they say, "Oh, look at this evil that's in these churches." Yes. Oh, but the problem is that unfortunately is a representation of Jesus Christ on the world, in the world, not not in reality, but in the world. In the eyes of non-Christians, they see those churches, they see those Christians, and I use those terms very lightly, but it is what it is. They see those people and they make a mockery of Jesus Christ. Mm. And it's unfortunate, but you see that, and it's because they've compromised the word of God time and time again. Time and time and again. Yeah. It's always the same story. Every single time, throughout history, throughout history, if you look at all the letters of Paul to the people, it's they're compromising what Jesus said, what Jesus has done. They're compromising the word of God. Yeah. Uh, Every uh, time. That's a Roman 2 case, basically, um, uh, where Paul takes an Old Testament passage. Yes. And that's God speaking. He's saying, you know, um, because of your works, because of your deeds and what you've done, mm. th my name is being blasphemed among the other nations, yes. right? So when Israel wasn't faithful to God... All the other nations took that as an opportunity to mock God's people. Yes. And today, if the church is not being faithful to the word of God, we're not following the way of Christ, yes. then people could always look at them and be like, oh, hold on, you're a, you're a hypocrite. You know, I thought you were a Christian, but you're living a different lifestyle. So I believe that's why it's so important to devote yourself to the word of God. We are coming to our thirty-minute mark. Mm -hmm. um, you want to share any any last words, or you want me to finish with a verse? Um, I'll just share one last thing, really Go quickly. Um, what I said then is not an excuse to be disrespectful to your church leadership. Absolutely not. Oh yeah. Always respect your elders in the church. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean you you 
compromise. No, no, no. But be respectful. Do it with a spirit of humility, with a spirit, with with love, and do it with uh, the utmost respect. When you do have to, unfortunately, uh, rebuke some people, but do it with in, with the utmost respect, especially if they're your elders in the church. Because sometimes you're gonna have to wrestle with your churches. Sometimes you're gonna have to, unfortunately, even your family members. Yes. Yeah. But it's something you have to do as a Christian. But please, please respect your elders, respect your family, respect your um, um, your uh, mother and father, honor them. But that doesn't mean you have to obey. Honor and obey are two different things. True, true. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll end it with this verse, and that's obviously Hebrews 4.12. It's pretty, pretty famous. Uh, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So we're ending it at this. And I want to just ask you a question today. After you finish this video, you might be watching after work or, you know, whatever time you watch your videos. Are you spending your time? Are you feeding your mind, your spirit and your soul? Are you feeding it with TikTok, YouTube? You know, or playing games or trying to find any excuse to do something other than devoting yourself to reading the word? Or are you going to open up God's word and let God speak to you? So hopefully you've enjoyed it. This is part one. Part one. Part two is coming after that. And part two is going to be about prayer. Yes. So we're going to be speaking about that. So God bless you guys and we'll see you next time. Take God care. Bless.